Full disclosure, I am fascinated by aliens. I think their existence somewhere out there among the cosmos is a certainty. The possibility of some of them having visited us is, in my opinion, likely, but by no means proven. Beyond the real possibilities though, I'm just fascinated by aliens in general. Different imaginings of how they would manifest, how we might encounter and interact with them. Stories in general about aliens, I think, serve as a mirror that tell us a lot about ourselves. One of my favourite, and certainly one of the most surreal, real world examples of this comes from a 16th century woodcut, an early form of newspaper essentially, describing something that is now known as the celestial phenomenon over Nuremberg. The image is entirely insane and the accompanying text doesn't exactly rationalise it, discussing a great battle in the sky and making substantial claims like the wreckage having fallen upon the earth and there having been a great many witnesses. It's had differing interpretations over the years. Carl Jung suggested that depending on the viewer's disposition, they may see it in different ways. A natural interpretation may suggest a swarm of insects, a religious interpretation, some kind of divine or spiritual messaging, a military interpretation, some kind of great battle between machines in the sky. And I completely agree with Jung's principles here. When I look at it, my Rorschach reaction is battle in the sky. There's an enormous Christian slant to how it's written and how it's being reported, and this makes sense given what we know about the strained political situation in the city at the time. The show Ancient Aliens likened it to scenes of celestial beings fighting in the sky from the sacred texts of Hinduism, but skeptics have rightfully done what they can to put this into some sort of understandable context, with theories ranging from it being a hoax to sell more press, to the more commonly accepted theory that it was an overly dramatic description of a natural phenomenon commonly referred to as a sun dog. We're going to look at the issues with that criticism, but for now, assuming we have no idea what it really is, I thought it would be a good idea to dig deep and see if there was anything else the document itself had to tell us. Because another big problem with this depiction is that it's showing you a whole timeline of events all at once. In fact, one thing we can say for certain is that there was no point in time where the sky looked exactly as depicted here, because this shows the same objects in multiple positions. In an effort to get a better view on what's actually going on here, I gave the whole thing a quick boop in After Effects and did my best at animating the different elements of the image according to analysis of the text to see if we could get a clearer picture of what was actually happening and see if it could help us come to a conclusion as to if this was some grand battle in the sky or a recognisable natural phenomenon. And while obviously this kind of forensic animation is extremely limited in what it can show us, I'm sure you'll agree that what I came up with is at the very least a clearer representation of what the document was trying to show. Rather than waffle on or make you wait until the end, I'm just going to roll the video credits and then we'll go straight into it while I read the original article over the top. In the morning of April 14th, 1561, at daybreak between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred on the sun. And then this was seen in Nuremberg, in the city, before the gates and in the country, by many men and women. At first there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood-red semicircular arcs, just like the moon in its last quarter. And in the sun, above and below on both sides, the colour was blood. There stood a round ball of partly dull, partly black ferrous colour. Likewise there stood on both sides, and as a torus about the sun, such blood-red ones, and other balls in large number, about three in a line and four in a square, also some alone. In between these globes there were visible a few blood-red crosses, between which there were blood-red strips, becoming thicker to the rear, and in the front malleable, like the rods of reed grass, which were intermingled. Among them, two big rods, one on the right, the other to the left, and within the small and big rods there were three, also four and more globes. These all started to fight among themselves, so that the globes which were first in the sun flew out to the ones standing on both sides. Thereafter, the globes standing outside the sun, in the small and large rods, flew into the sun. Besides, the globes flew back and forth among themselves and fought vehemently with each other for over an hour. And when the conflict in and again out of the sun was most intense, they became fatigued to such an extent that they all, as said above, fell from the sun down upon the earth as if they all burned. And then they wasted away on the earth with immense smoke. After all this, there was something like a black spear, very long and thick, sighted, the shaft pointed to the east, the point pointed west. Whatever such signs mean, God alone knows.
Hopefully now the timeline is clearer and we can have a longer discussion about the incident, some things that I came to understand while creating this, and some pretty major issues with the theories supposedly debunking this. Because despite the consensus being that this is either a fraud or a solar event, when you actually go look at the information corroborating that, it's extremely thin on the ground. There's no Snopes article for it, the Wikipedia article has two or three links to people supposedly debunking it. The main one, Nuremberg UFO Battle Debunked by Fred Johnson, is so old it's accessible only through archived links of a website that used to exist called ancientaliensdebunk.com. It's got a fair few spelling errors and a lot of questionable examples used as supposed proof, as well as using an outdated version of the translation. The main claim made by Johnson's article is that this woodcut was simply an over-the-top report of a pretty standard atmospheric phenomenon sensationalized by its creator Hans Glazer to better sell news publications to a religiously devout public. Critics have tried to paint Glazer as a sensationalist making up wild stories for 16th century clickbait. They point to his reports and illustrations about the sky's raining blood or the mysterious appearance of bearded grapes. However, both of these seemingly odd tales are actually true. It's now scientifically documented that grapes can grow beard-like mould caused by wet conditions near harvest time. Blood rain is also well documented throughout history. Water droplets can sometimes appear blood red due to the presence of dust particles or algae spores present in the atmosphere. It's also unfair to suggest that Glazer was any kind of extreme exaggerator. This style was very much in keeping with similar news publications of the time where stories were often aggrandized and romanticized to meet public interest. But while stories of celestial phenomenon were certainly popular, it's really a false equivalency to suggest this is of the exact same ilk. We can find literally hundreds of stories about strange weather phenomenon, plenty from Glazer himself, but none other than this one and the close sister incident at Basil that describe anything like these varied and opposing craft facing off for conflict in the sky. No matter what the skeptic articles may suggest, 16th century news publications weren't just littered with reports of UFO encounters. They're just not the same thing. The language used might be similar, there may be similar elements of art style, but fundamentally the events here are unique. And as I'll demonstrate, that art style, that aesthetic, doesn't extend to the unfamiliar objects littering the sky. Having spent a fair amount of time retracing and recreating this, I would say categorically, there is a clear difference in style for the unknown objects in the sky and really everything else. It's clear that the artist was flamboyant and self-assured with things that he was certain about drawing. Things like the sun and the Nuremberg skyline. Things he'd had a lot of practice drawing and knew exactly what they looked like. And then with the other objects, things where the artist was not certain of how they were formed or how to draw them at all really, then you see a very different style. Minimal geometries that try to fit exactly to given descriptions. We know the artist was drawing this from eyewitness reports, so this makes sense. He wasn't trying to aesthetically represent, he was trying to accurately represent. It's the exact same thing with the basal images, and that to me suggests honesty and reliability on the part of the artist. So when you really get down to it, it's entirely unfair to describe Glazer as some kind of outlying peddler of sensationalism. With Glazer out of the way, let's look at the main claim made by these articles, that this is essentially a representation of several different simultaneous celestial phenomenon occurring at once. The main one here being a so-called sundog, and we have a great many images offered up, none that really look like what we're seeing here, but certainly bearing a similarity with certain elements. The most convincing image has to be this one, which features an extremely rare grouping of different optical phenomena all at one time. And honestly, this image alone is pretty convincing. And when you get hit with the double whammy of being told this is how artists at the time drew such phenomena, then really that's all you need to dismiss it. But there's problems with both of those points. Let's take probably the most common occurrence we see on this photo, the corona or halo projection. Not a massively rare phenomenon, and essentially what they're suggesting the phenomenon over Nuremberg was. This is a drawing done by Hans Glazer of one of those exact halos. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but to me, this looks like this, and neither of them look like this. This looks like something very different. The depictions of the events at Basel look very different. That this is being used as evidence that the Nuremberg image is just a drawing of a halo with a few parhelions around it is baffling. It's evidence of the opposite. We can see exactly how the artist depicts things like that. It looks like this, and nothing like this. Yet skeptics are certain that this is evidential that the Nuremberg carving is a depiction of one of these optical phenomena. I think it's pretty clear that whatever it's depicting, it's something different, something more busy and cluttered with objects. I would believe a meteor shower long before I believed this was a depiction of a sun halo, because again, we know exactly how Glazer draws that. We know how he draws lots of different stellar events. He did it 
a lot, and this is absolutely something different. I think the initial red arcs, the red blazing ring around the sun, and maybe the first red circles that appear, that to me could well be natural phenomenon, and looks very much in line with Glazer's drawings of such phenomenon, but everything else looks like something very different. The other main issue with the skeptic's argument is that in making the leap to it being optical phenomenon, they're ignoring a large part of the testimony. This was a physical phenomenon. Objects are described as having malleability and other physical traits. They burn and let out immense smoke and come to rest like wreckage on the earth. The article by Johnson brings up the issue of the crash and wreckage and mockingly makes the assertion that this can't have happened because if it had, Germany would have become an interstellar culture in the 17th century. For me though, the existence of tangible objects throws into question any purely natural explanation, claiming, as these articles do, to be able to say with certainty it was a halo or formation or coronal sundog when the depiction clearly shows and describes physical objects being destroyed, it seems to be a pretty major flaw. And this probably goes without saying, but neither of the articles, nor any credible surrounding literature, entertains for a moment the possibility that there were actually objects in the sky engaged in some sort of conflict. Which I completely understand, obviously we're lacking proven precedent for extraterrestrial sky battles, but at the same time, just like we accept that sun dogs and halo projections occur, we also accept and spend a lot of money investigating the accepted phenomenon of UFOs. And so, while far-fetched, it seems to me that a major flaw within the small amount of literature on the topic is that it never even considers once taking the article at its word and exploring that possibility. There's a really salient point from the secondary article that I should also address, namely that the area was some kind of hub for these sort of news events. As I've said, it's certainly true that celestial phenomenon were overpopularized in news publications at the time, but this is a false equivalency to draw with the Nuremberg woodcut, because this kind of extremely odd depiction was not normalized in any way. There aren't other woodcuts you can point to that look like this, other than the one at Basel, which, as I've mentioned, is kind of a sister incident. They're close on the timeline and close geographically, and the events are very similar to those at Nuremberg. But the articles then roll these up into proof of some sort of wave of hysteria regarding UFO battles, where such stories had become oversaturated and commonplace. But that simply isn't true. Stories of natural celestial phenomenon may have been common, but these incidents at Nuremberg and Basel stand extremely isolated. There's nothing substantial to the supposed debunking. The Nuremberg woodcut has wreckage, debris, mechanical objects. It's not similar to any of the examples provided by academics or debunkers, because really there isn't anything similar to this. So when you remove these explanations, or at least massively cast doubt on them, really what we're left with is either the notion that this must be a hoax for news sales, or to heighten religious fervour at a time that was crucial to the political situation of the city, or it was something else entirely, and something truly out of this world occurred. But I certainly don't buy into the notion that this is simply depicting a natural celestial phenomenon, because the evidence just doesn't match up. Lastly, as a fun little experiment, go check out the bottom right of the image. There's two men stood in the fields, looking at the wreckage in terror with their arms up aghast. A woman slightly behind them, again looking at the wreckage in terror, again arms up aghast. And then a fourth figure, who I want you to go look very closely at. I thought it was an old washerwoman at first, but there isn't any sign of her physical femininity like we see with the other woman, and what I thought was at first a bonnet actually appears just to be an irregularly shaped grey head. Not only that, but the figure appears to be holding a strange object, which I think is actually meant to be a small plume of smoke. If you look over the chimneys, you'll see similar shapes to it. Their other hand is stretched ahead, and when you view this in situ, it actually looks a lot like the odd grey-headed figure is chasing the woman. So go check that out and let me know what you think down below. I'll see you soon guys, peace.